Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our invocation. Almighty God, thou art the way, the truth, and the light. Bless, we pray thee tonight, all institutions of learning and all who teach and study there. May those who teach be taught of thee, and those who learn be guided by thy spirit. We thank thee for all those who have invested their lives into this, our high school. Draw us together now in the consciousness of complete fellowship of the heart with all those who have gone from it in far cities and states, and may we, by taking thought of each other, find ourselves mutually strengthened in the greater part of our nature. Fill our hearts, dear Lord, with gratitude for all that our high school years have brought us. Open our eyes to the world's needs and what we can bring to it. Help us to keep our lives in tune with all that is good by enriching our minds with the knowledge we so desperately seek and give us abundantly the spirit of heat, who came not to be ministered to, but to minister. So may thy kingdom come and thy world find peace and fruitfulness for thy sake. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, members of the Board of Education, superintendent, and faculty. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2011 induction ceremony for the new members of the Cleveland chapter of the National Honor Society. Tonight is a very special night for these inductees because they will receive one of the highest honors that can be awarded to a high school student. Their selection for membership is based upon careful consideration of each student's record of scholarship, leadership, service, and character by our faculty council. These fine young classmates represent the best we have to offer at Cleveland High School, and we have much to be proud of. Our theme this evening is rising to the occasion. With so many natural disasters and world catastrophes, we feel it's important to emerge as leaders and to do our part not only to evoke change in our community, but also in our world. With our numerous hours of community service, leadership in and out of school, we are prepared to make a lasting impression. Rising to the occasion is more than just a theme. It is about helping those who need us most.
rise above the crowd by anonymous. The world is full of people content to be what they are, who never know the joy of success. They lack the will to go that far. Yet in this world, there is a need for some to lead the rest, to rise above the average life by giving of their best. Are you the one who dares to try when challenged by the task, to rise to heights you've never dreamed, or is that too much to ask? This can be your year for great purpose to achieve if you accept the challenge and in yourself believe. At this time, I would like to introduce to you our guest speaker tonight, Ms. Laura Ressler. Ms. Ressler graduated from Dayton High School in 1996, where she was a member of the National Honor Society. In 2000, she continued her educational career at Texas Tech University, where she graduated with a bachelor's in history. While at Texas Tech, she became a lifelong member of the Alpha Delta Pi sorority. Ms. Ressler began teaching sixth grade English in 2000 at Woodrow Wilson Junior High. Currently, Ms. Wessler teaches advanced placement and level world history and has been the National Honor Society advisor for two years at Dayton High School. With 11 years of teaching experience under her belt, Ms. Wessler has found a way to inspire her students while continuing to pursue excellence in her own life. Ms. Wessler is not only an outstanding educator and NHS advisor, but she is currently pursuing a master's degree in school counseling through Lamar University while actively participating in Delta Kappa Gamma Society International. Ms. Ressler is a devoted wife and loving mother of a three-year-old son. Please join me in welcoming our guest speaker tonight, Ms. Laura Ressler. Good evening. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Guilford, Mr. Painter, and the National Honor Society for inviting me to speak to you this evening. My name is Laura Ressler. I am a former member of National Honor Society, and I am a current sponsor of the um, Dayton High School chapter of the National Honor Society. One of the things that I have come to realize is that, like the American Express card, membership in National Honor Society does have its privileges. Recognition of character is the first privilege. The privilege of being of the highest character and of, and of maintaining the principles of morality and high ethics. Some of these expectations include trustworthiness, respect, fairness, caring for others, and citizenship. Recognition of service is the second privilege. The privilege of giving of oneself to others, whether it involves helping younger students realize the joy of learning through tutoring, picking up litter on the side of the highway because your chapter has adopted a highway, or however you have chosen to serve your school or community. The rewards of doing something for someone without compensation are invaluable. Recognition of leadership is the third privilege. You are seen as being resourceful and a good problem solver. The job of leading and guiding others in pursuits of excellence and helping others achieve their fullest potential is truly a privilege. Now with the many privileges, there are also, price to be, also prices to be paid. Scholarship is your annual fee, the cost of membership. Maintaining your academic performance ensures that you can remain a member, but surely we can all agree academic success has, has its advantages outside of membership of the National Honor Society, so maybe we can move this to the privilege size. The time and effort of maintaining our membership through fundraisers and service projects could be considered a cost of membership as well. But when we consider the bonds of friendship and opportunity for self-growth, we can certainly move this to the list of privileges as well. As with any credit card, I advise you to remain out of debt, maintain your grades and the requirements of membership. So when you receive your membership card this evening, think about the privileges of membership in the National Honor Society. Congratulations on becoming a member of the National Honor Society, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. students and more than 20,500 public and private schools have been selected as members of the National Honor Society. These students have met the high standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. 
maintained by the chapters of the National Honor Society. Not only have they lived exemplary lives within their schools, these honor students have continued to be motivated by the challenging ideals of the society. The list of outstanding National Honor Society graduates is most impressive and inspiring. The record of more than 9 million National Honor Society members in later life indicates the continuous and almost limitless development of the great potential and talents of those who receive recognition and encouragement from their high schools. Our NHS alumni have been become effective citizens engaged in professional, technical, humanitarian, civic, and military work. Many of the names, if given, would be readily recognized individuals. Therefore, we salute all names all those who have gone on to distinguish themselves in the eyes of their fellow men by living up to our four ideals, scholarship, leadership, service, and character, for which they have been recognized in high schools through memberships in the National Honor Society. Students of Cleveland High School faculty, honored guests, no honor conferred by this school exceeds that which is embodied in the National Honor Society. It represents the fundamental objectives for which schools are instituted and gives recognition to those who have aspired to and attained these desired ends. Throughout history, man has recognized the value of such distinction and in one way or another has marked for special honor those who excel. Ancient and medieval universities established their honor societies. In modern times, many honors at the disposal of the school are only partial, in the sense that they recognize the special ability, skill, or talent. This evening, the school is honoring these fine students for accomplishments already attained and for the promise of continued excellence. The constitution of this organization recognizes four cardinal objectives as fundamental in all educational practices. Scholarship, leadership, character, and service. The purpose of this society is to exalt these objectives and hold them before the school as goals towards which all should strive. The aim, therefore, of NHS is to encourage scholarly habits, engage in worthy services, and to lead in all things that advance the welfare of the school. The theme of the series, Rising to the Occasion, the success of any endeavor is based largely upon the ability of its leaders to effectively guide this group. This evening, we are proud to introduce a man who, through his leadership of Cleveland High School, personifies the highest standards of National Honor Society. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Alan Painter, Principal of Cleveland High School. In my role as an educator, I've witnessed firsthand the transformative power of what can be gained from an education. It is one of the most valuable and rewarding assets that anyone can attain. Education requires an extreme measure of dedication and is the foundation for the success of life. Most importantly, that education can be a powerful instrument to shed light on the world on behalf of these exceptional students, I now light the gold candle of knowledge and education. Leadership. I am outstanding leadership. I am the power of personality for the advancement of mankind. Being a true leader, I am unselfish in serving others. I am humble and I am generous. I am courageous so that I can command respect. To get my services, men must develop in themselves the qualities that are useful to humanity. They must gain knowledge so infinite and definite that they are able to act wisely in times of stress. They must develop characters strong enough to carry the tasks that should be done. Some can see but cannot do. Others can do but cannot see. I am the one who sees and does what is best for the group, the community, the state, or the nation with no thought of selfish gain. On their behalf, I now light the green candle of leadership.
Character. I am the finest character. I am a compound of all the finest moral and spiritual qualities such as gentleness, strength, faith, hope, and charity. All of these elements united by moral and spiritual chemistry are what I represent. I am the result of independence, thought, and perseverance in choosing wisely the principles and motives that control lives. I am the product of daily thoughts, words, and deeds, as well as daily forgiveness, unselfishness, sorry, kindness and sympathy. I am the possession of reliability, promptness, courage, courtesy, honor, self-control, and consideration for others. It is not what others think you are, but what you really are. I am a, I am a composite of all of the common virtues instead of the seal of righteousness upon everyone's goals. I am the crown of, and glory of life. I am the noblest possession of men. On their behalf, I now light the white candle, which represents the purity of character. Scholarship. I am scholarship. I am the power of the mind which can dispel ignorance, superstition, and fear through scientific investigation and truth. I know the past, I learn from the present, and I make the future something more than a chance. I inspire a love for the beautiful and appreciation of the truth and a reverence of God. I help all who seek my help when they travel the road of darkness. I am within reach of everyone, but he who desires my help must earn it by putting forth with faithful, hard, and tireless effort, which is never lost but returned with manifold blessings. On their behalf, I now light the blue candle of scholarship. Service. Service is my first name. My full name is service to my school. My, aims to have, my aim is to have people lose themselves in generous enthusiasm and cooperation with others for common ends, whether they are universal in appeal or humble in their mission. I am the highest form of happiness. I am the golden rule of one who labors to give others the joy that illuminates his or her, her life. I shine my rays of light to the farthest heights of men's attainments and down to the lowest depths of his deeds. I'm giving, giving not only of my means and time, but also of myself. Not only to my friends, but also to my foes. Not only to my school, but to my community. Not for the love of praise, but for the love of my fellow men. I stand for the sacrifice of an ideal and utter ab abnegation without material rewards. On their behalf, I now light the red candle of service. These young people you see before you tonight have earned one of the highest honors bestowed upon high school students. Their leadership abilities, academic history, and high moral standards have given them this honor. Please join me as I welcome these bright young students to the Cleveland chapter of the National Honor Society. Will the inductees please rise? I ask you to consider seriously the obligations and responsibilities which membership in this society places before you. If you are willing to assume these responsibilities, I ask you to answer I do to this question. Do you promise to work faithfully to maintain the high standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character which you have attained in high school? Do you promise to raise them ever so high in the years to come, always keeping in mind the pursuit of excellence? 
Will the following candidates whose names are called please come to the stage? Kirsty Brewster Arnold. Lamisha Liggins. On behalf of the faculty and the staff, student body of Cleveland High School, I hereby accept these candidates as full-fledged members of this society. I hope they will be found worthy of the trust invested in them. I will now have the candidates take their pledges. Please repeat after me. I pledge myself to uphold the high purpose of this society to which I have been elected, striving in every way, by word and by deed, to make its ideals the ideals of my school and my life. You are seekers of excellence.
and therefore you have pledged yourself to maintain the high purpose of the National Honor Society. I congratulate you, salute you, because it marks the recognition of work well done thus far. May it bring to you and to others an inspiration to go forward to even greater achievement in the future. You may be seated and extinguish your candles. Every year we offer awards to the students who exemplify the four basic ideals of the National Honor Society. It is my honor to announce the names of the recipients of these awards. The scholarship award is awarded to the two individuals that have the highest GPA in the upcoming class. The scholarship award goes to Kirsty Brewster Arnold. I trust you will continue to uphold these standards throughout the rest of your high school career. It is now time to install new officers. The installation of officers is an important and serious occasion. You have indicated your faith and trust in these your newly elected officers to serve for the upcoming year. Their service and accomplishments depend largely on your cooperation. Following is as important as leading. In any organization, there comes a time when some must leave for a while and others must follow. In all your undertakings, may you always keep in mind the guiding principles of the National Honor Society. Will the outgoing officers please step forward as your name is called and receive a candle, a symbol of the torch of freedom and knowledge which will remind you to bear forward the searching light of truth that will lead others to follow the light. President Ruxar Khan. Vice President Rebecca Rawls. Ashley Shears. <laughs> Treasurer, Katrina Daskis. Cook. 
Chaplain Josh Poindexter. Parliamentarian David Cuevas. And Assistant Secretary Sierra Romano. You have earned candles which you will pass on to your successors. You have worked with patience and care and made dark ways bright. We thank you for all your efforts. You have added to the history of this organization. Will the new officers please come forward as your name is called? President Sierra Roman. President Caroline Cook. Secretary Matthew Duran. Treasurer Natalie Alcantar. Historian, Allison Moore. Chaplain, Joshua Poindexter. Parliamentarian, David Cuevas. And Assistant Secretary, Haley McCain. Please give your new officers a round of applause. New officers, in, ex in accepting your role as officers, you have indicated your willingness to give the best of your time and effort to carry out the principles of the National Honor Society. This is an important responsibility and privilege. The world today, as never before, needs faithful and efficient leaders. And your school is looking forward to you to be a leader among students. Do you pledge to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which you have been elected? Will you be true to the principal standards of character, leadership, scholarship, and service? May your light blaze forth for a successful year, and at the expiration of your term of office, may it be passed on with the satisfaction that much was accomplished for the welfare of our school and our organization. Please extinguish your candle and be seated. Congratulations to all the new officers. They are a promising group of students. I expect to see great things from them in this coming year. Now, please join me in congratulating the honoring graduates from Cleveland High School for the 2010-2011 school year who received the prestigious stoles that represent the membership of the National Honor Society. Please come forward as your name is called. Anita Amini.
Cullen Burt. Gloria Carlos. <laughs> Katrina Daskis. Luxar Khan. Marshall McMaster. Rebecca Rawls. J.C. Lynn Rush. <laughs> Ashley Shears. <laughs> and last but not least, Miss Emily Wood. Congratulations, graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to our ceremony tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. This is one of the highest honors that a student can receive in high school. So all of you should be proud of each and every one of the students you see before you. Before we close, I would like to thank our speaker, Ms. Laura Ressler, for her inspiring words this evening. I would also like to thank our principal, Mr. Painter, our advisor, Ms. Guilford, as well as our faculty council, Ms. Amini, Ms. Culver, Ms. Perdue, Ms. Smith, Ms. Soto, and Colonel Meyer. In addition, special thanks to the National Junior Honor Society for their help tonight and Cleveland High School JROTC for their color guard presentation. Most importantly, we would like to thank all the members of our community and parents who continue to support the National Honor Society by donating their time and service to our organization. We could not have done this without their support. At this time, I'd like to lead us in the benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, dismiss us tonight with thy blessings. We thank thee for the kingdom of talent and minds that thou hast given us, for the everlasting gift of scholarship, leadership, and character, and service, which has been bestowed upon us. Deep in our hearts to the knowledge that you reign over us all, our ruler, our judge, our father, and our God. For thy mercy's sake, amen.